Buenos dias, mi amigos y amigas. So today is part of the interculturalism module. We're going to look at an injustice that occurs when people accused of crimes are not given a fair trial. As we know, everyone is entitled to a fair trial according to the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. In this video, I'm going to talk about two English boys who were born 60 years apart, but who were both found guilty of crimes that they didn't physically commit. Derek Bentley was born in London in 1933. Derek was unable to read or write because of learning difficulties and had the mental age of an 11 year old. He had gone involved in petty crime as a youth and spent time in a reform school where he was bullied constantly. For a year after his release he hardly left his room, but with his family's encouragement Derek gradually began to go outside again. During 1952 Derek met Christopher Craig, an aggressive young petty criminal. Derek hero worshipped Chris, he was everything Derek wasn't, charismatic, clever, confident while Derek was passive, easily led, and grateful to finally be accepted by others, even a dangerous thug like Craig. On November the 2nd, 1952, Chris and Derek tried to break into this warehouse. And this is what happened next. I'm a police officer, show yourselves. You want us? Why don't you fucking well come and get us? Don't be so bloody stupid. Don't be so this place stupid. is surrounded, you hear me? You don't say anything, all right? He's got a gun. Don't fucking move. Come on, son, game's up. Get back, Cobber. Give that thing to me. Leave heavy, Chris! You've got a fucking gun too, have you? <laughs> eh? Eh? What's this, eh? What's this, eh? Look, you're under arrest, of course, Nick. <laughs> oh, oh. Hello, GW. This is car 2Z. We need help. There are men armed and shooting at Barlow and Parker, Tamworth Road. Surrounded, give yourself up. I'm Craig. You just killed my brother 12 years. I've got the keys. The 
Bolt's off his head. Come on, you brave coppers. <laughs> So, as we saw in that video clip, it was Christopher Craig firing the gun on the roof that night. Derek Bentley had already been technically arrested. He played no part in the murder of PC Miles. Nevertheless, when Christopher Craig ran out of bullets, both boys were taken into custody and charged with the murder of the policeman. Now, in England at the time, the punishment for murder was the death sentence. And... Christopher Craig escaped the hangman's noose because he was 16 years of age. Poor Derek Bentley was 19, so even though he played no part in PC Miles' shooting, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. Now, there was huge uh, shock and unhappiness in England at the thought of a, a mentally defective boy, if you like, being sentenced to death for a murder that he didn't actually commit. Nevertheless, it went ahead and Derek Bentley was hanged at Wandsworth Prison in January 1953. The, the outcry over his execution went on for so long that it actually helped with the ab abolition of the death penalty in England 10 years later. But his family um, never accepted it and fought uh, for a pardon for Derek for the rest of their lives. So, if Derek Bentley never actually killed anybody, why was he executed? Well, in England, there's a 300-year-old law called joint enterprise, or sometimes common purpose. And put simply, this means that if two or more people are involved in a crime, they can be jointly convicted, even if one was hardly involved in the offence, if the court believes they knew what was going to happen. Derek Bentley was found guilty of PC Moses' murder because the jury decided he knew that Christopher Craig had a gun and was likely to use it. Although the death sentence has now been abolished, joint enterprise is still being used today in English courts and children as young as 13 are being given life sentences for crimes they didn't directly commit. The main idea behind joint enterprise is that a person knows in advance that an associate of theirs is likely to commit an offence. But children don't have the ability to predict events or understand the consequences of other people's actions the way that an adult can. And poor Derek Bentley, a vulnerable youth, the low IQ and their learning difficulties was never going to know in advance what Christopher Craig might do on that roof in London in 1952. 60 years later in London in August 2013 a similar crime occurred. Two groups of youths got into a street fight and one of them was fatally stabbed. Like Derek Bentley, Alex Henry was also 19 and had struggled academically and socially. When he saw his friends involved in an altercation, he ran to get involved. He threw a mobile phone at one man and punched another. Alex, who had been shopping with his friend Cameron Ferguson, runs into the altercation when he sees Eunice and Janelle on the other side of the road. See them. Yeah. There they are, they're running there now because they're running really fast because they've seen their friends. The fight, which lasts less than 45 seconds, takes place in an area not covered by CCTV cameras. The first boy to leave the fight yeah. is carrying what later proved to be the fatal weapon. There he is. Stop. There. there. Now, see? This is the bag here. And it's sticking out. And it's an sticking angle. out. So it's got a heavy, heavy A object, plastic bag doesn't stick out like that unless it's got something in it that is long. The running boy who confessed later that day to the other three that he'd used a concealed knife in the fight is the 19-year-old Cameron Ferguson. 
Do you feel that there's been enough emphasis on finding which of the four were actually responsible for, for stabbing the victim? No, I think they just want to put them all in the frame. They're all there. They know one of the four did it. And as they are allowed to under joint enterprise, they can just scoop them all up in one go. They don't have to find out really who out of the four did it. Uh, makes their job easier really, doesn't it? When the case went to trial, Cameron Ferguson pleaded guilty to murder and was jailed for 22 years. But due to joint enterprise, Alex Henry was also found guilty of murder because the prosecution argued he could have known Ferguson had a knife. Alex insists he had no idea Ferguson was carrying a knife that day. After he was jailed, Alex Henry was diagnosed with autism. This meant that, just like Derek Bentley, Alex was not capable of knowing what might happen or what the intentions of Cameron Ferguson were that day. An autistic person doesn't understand other people's feelings or intentions, and they can't predict another person's behaviour. Alex's lawyers appealed the murder conviction due to his autism diagnosis, but even though he'd been diagnosed by a leading UK autism expert, his appeal was rejected. The court said that because Alex Henry's mother was a psychologist, she may have trained him to act autistic. If the death penalty still existed in England, Alex would have been executed by the state just like Derek Bentley 60 years previously. I think most people would agree that Derek and Alex were both badly let down by the British legal system. In democratic countries, as we know, a citizen is legally entitled to a fair trial, something that neither boy received. Derek's low IQ and Alex's autism meant that they often struggled to make and keep friends, and this created problems when those who did accept them became involved in crime. This is not an excuse, but it is a valid justification for these two boys getting caught up in situations that spoiled beyond their control and understanding 60 years apart. Derek Bentley clearly was guilty of attempted armed robbery and should have received a suitable jail sentence for this offence. Instead, he was hanged for a murder he didn't commit. Likewise, Alex Henry was guilty of a fray or assault and should have received an appropriate sentence, but he's now spent seven years in prison for a murder that someone else committed and confessed to. In 1998, 45 years after his execution, the British Court of Appeal agreed that Derek Bentley should not have been found guilty and overturned his conviction. Just like Derek Bentley, Alex Henry's family have also never stopped fighting for his release. His mother Sally has campaigned tirelessly to have Alex freed and many British MPs now agree his conviction is unsafe. Sally has also created a website www.justiceforalexhenry.co.uk to highlight how unjust his murder conviction was. Alex's sister Charlotte quit her job and became a lawyer to focus on her brother's case. If the British government continue to refuse to free him, they intend to take Alex's case to the Supreme Court or the European Court of Human Rights. Sally and Cheryl also have the support of an organisation called Jengba, Joint Enterprise Not Guilty by Association, which campaigns for the release of prisoners unfairly jailed under the principle of joint enterprise. After seven years behind bars, surely Alex Henry has now paid his debt to society and deserves to be released. Thanks very much for watching and there's a couple of links to the Alex Henry case and also the Derek Bentley case if you're interested. So press the like button, thanks a million and I'll see you soon.